All right, uh, I think we're getting started. Just gonna do some quick technical stuff. First, I need to put the zoom up. Oh, God. All right, bad sleep today, but uh, I think I'll be able to manage. <laughs> it's such an awkward Zoom. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I think I need to bring this down a little. Okay. Okay, so that's me right here. Me being cute. Now I'm looking at my OBS. And my YouTube studio, I assume. I'm always confused how like YouTube studio works. Uh, gotta, gotta do something better with this. Gotta do better. I wonder if I can, oh, okay, I see. So my thing is live, cool. Well, uh, YouTube studio. Okay, yeah, you're gonna hear my voice looping around, but um, I think we're good. Let's get started. <sighs> so today's story. I'm excited about today's story because um, it's Raymond Carver, and I, uh, I honestly, I actually don't know that much about Raymond Carver. I know he's the, you know, he's the originator of some famous quotes. Um, what we do when we're thinking about <laughs> Jesus, I forgot. Uh, like I know he has a way with words that's very memorable. Uh, I remember the first uh, sort of scene in Bird. Oh man, I see. That's 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 what happens when you're like spent five years in the tech industry, and you stop watching movies and reading books, but or reading literary stuff. But what was it? Birdman? I think it was Birdman. Right, it was Birdman. Birdman. Um, and did you, yeah, and did you get, and did you get what you want here on this earth, you know, to be loved and uh, to be beloved or something like that? There's like this famous quote that was used on Birdman that like was very moving when I first saw it, but you can't tell now because I forgot it. So Raymond Carver, my only association right now is that he has, um, he has a way with words that's very memorable, even for me, at least, personally. Uh, also, he's kind of like, um, uh, I, I expect him to be uh, sort of um, spare with the, with his language, not not especially like Baroque or like extravagant, nothing crazy, uh, you know, sort of understated, um, uh, not like, and we're not even talking, we're not talking like crazy rich Asians or whatever with like people who are uh, sort of on the upper crust of society. We're talking about people who are sort of down and out. Uh, and that's what I understand. And it's a lot of Im internal and emotional, um, maybe brooding characters, maybe. I might be totally off base on that, but like something that's not exactly, uh, something that's not exactly like over like like out loud and brash and and noisy i'm expecting uh so i'm expecting a lot of emotional and interpersonal sort of conflict uh and we'll see what happens i i don't know anything about the story yet so we'll go into it so th that's all i know so far raymond carver famous 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 short story writer uh amazing with words and kind of focuses on the uh, the sort of average Joe, uh, and in particular, I think the internal conflicts 
uh, or the interpersonal conflicts. And starting with this title right here, will you please be quiet, please? That could be something like a mom talking to her son. It could be something like uh, a, a husband talking to his wife. Uh, but, you know, being annoyed and being kind of pushed to the edge. Uh, stop talking, please. And this double and this double please, this double please has this sense of weakness that I get. So that's what I'm getting from the title so far. And uh, I'm going to I'm going because I literally know like nothing. I'm going to read about Raymond Carver using this introduc uh, introductory like blurb in this book. All right, here we go. John Gardner, which I assume was a pretty famous writer. But I know very little. Okay. Iowa, as always. Iowa is sort of the center of uh, creative writing in America uh, in the last century. Is one of the centers, I guess. Oh, this was his very first short story. You know, uh, I see, I see, I see. Minimalist. He doesn't like that word, minimalist. What we talk about when we talk about love is that freaking title <laughs> uh, that I was trying to remember like uh, five minutes ago. What we talk about when we talk about love, which was riffed on by uh, Murakami, who does what we talk about when we talk about running, I think he has that book or something like that, that I also didn't read because I'm a illiterate dope. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That's such a great, like that circuitous verbal actually i just want to mention that before i even because this actually increases my anticipation i'm really excited to read uh, raymond carver just that supernatural and maybe even super american you know it might, it might not be a british thing uh it might not be an english thing uh but like what we talk about when we talk about love this this natural sounding sort of rhythmic and sort of repetitive and sort of discursive and this sort of it just like um this verbal language, right? What we talk about, what we talk about love. Because um, that's not efficient. That's not minimalist, you know, this title. Uh, but it's so... Uh, it's so intriguing. Like, I want to know what we talk about when we talk about love. He wrote poems, too. Ah. Basically, no information. Just, you know, basically accolades. You know what? That's the problem with uh, this book's uh, introductions. It doesn't really get me any information. So let's switch on over to the to Chrome real quick. And I just want to get a sense real quick of like what to, you know, because I already know a, like a relatively, I know, it turns out I know some stuff about Raymond Carver. So I don't really have to focus too, I don't think I need to focus too much on the pre-reading this time. But, you know, I still want to just sort of get a sense of like, you know, when did this short story come out? Um, I guess it's one of his earlier ones. Uh, so if it was 1967, you know, what, like, what do we, what do we know that might help me read this story. So in my experience, it looks like Goodreads is always a good place to start. So I'm gonna start with Goodreads because uh, it just gets a sense of how other people react to it. Uh, let's open up these three tabs and see what happens here real quick. So this is his first collection. Okay, so that's the first thing. This is very early Carver. Uh, humor and tragedy, ordinary people. Uh, humor is not something I was really expecting too much from Raymond, uh, Raymond Carver, but okay. I mean, you know, everything I'd said so far does sound a little grim, so humor would be nice. Um, uh, <laughs> this is funny. This is a negative uh, reaction. The story is told in such dry fashion and is obviously a biographical parallel. I don't like, I don't want to give him points. I like his visceral writing and detailed analysis of setting. Detailed analysis. But his tone is so subdued and detached, insincere, 
Yeah, I fully recognize your feeling. I feel disappointed. Okay, so that's good. That's good. That's a good thing to to struggle with. And maybe you know this is something you might be struggling with when you read Raymond Carver. I'm not too scared of it. You know, I believe. Um, I'm hoping to go into the story and find some sort of like emotional connection. Okay, but but yeah, the dry fashion of of uh, the dry language. Whereas here we have the best collection. Where has he been all my life? Uh, this is probably a little too much um, imagery. Okay, yeah. So this is just uh, sort of overly. Uh, I mean, because it's so positive about it, there's not really. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get much clues as to how to navigate the story. Just as Flannery O'Connor, uh, uh, pivotal turning point. Okay, so pivotal turning point in these. These these make it or break it moments in these characters' lives, you know, these characters break, and that's what matters. Uh, straight to the broken heart of these characters. Uh, lots of <laughs> which can either lead to change or healing, or can be a signpost for more of the same to come. Um, goodness, I love this title, Ben. And uh, do I love this title? Will you please be quiet, please. It is very evocative. I mean, it does definitely give me... It puts me in that domestic scene right away. So I do like that title. Um, you know, please be quiet. Please, right? You have that, that that note of desperation that you get from those couple very simple, very easy words. So I do like that, uh, that that's happening right there. Scattered Easter eggs that shed light onto deeper meaning. For example, what's in Alaska? Phallic symbols foreshadowing the bars later on. Okay, so apparently, pay attention. So apparently, Raymond Carver will reward your attention to detail. If you notice the details, uh, he will do something with them later on that will sort of reward you for paying attention to them. And yes, I think Raymond Carver is sort of the quintessential short story, American short story writer. Uh, and I think that's sort of par for the course. So I am hoping when I go into this story and when I read into the details, I'm hoping that that's not all for naught. I'm hoping that something will happen with them. Um, which you can't always trust every re a writer to do, you know. Some writers have certain types of things they want you to, that they kind of reward, and um, and so, um, so, like you have to sort of learn how to read every single writer. Sometimes, even within the same writer, you know, you have to re learn to read every single text. Uh, so that's a journey of the reader. I'm thinking about. Spare writing, expose wrong. So this is just a big, long paragraph. So I'm not sure. <laughs> Kmart meets Alfonso Cuaron, uh, Cuaron vibe. Such a funny. Uh, this guy is a good writer. Poor man's Hemingway, but he's more human brutal. Brutal, brutal is an interesting word, and breakage, right? That crisis, that make it or break it. Um, Kmart realist is talking about the negative sides so Kmart is the sort of middle low income sort of um, discount slash uh, uh, mass uh, what do you call that like wholesale chain I guess is it wholesale uh, so that's where the people that's where like the not rich shop right they no longer exist in America and uh, you know we're talking about the not rich realist uh, which is Raymond Carver. So I was kind of right about my memories about Raymond Carver. This is honestly good enough. I don't feel like we have too much. I have too many more questions, honestly. I guess maybe, maybe I could, yeah, maybe I could read into this part. Um, but I don't want to read too much of, well, let's see. Two teachers who claim they are happy with two kids suddenly talk about a time at a drunken party two years ago when she kissed some friend. Okay. And stuff happens. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read the rest of that. Um, stuff happens. So let me think about my pre-reading. I wanted to really just know, you know, what was his style. You know, what what are the kind of things I might want to pay attention to while I'm reading the story. Uh, I don't really necessarily want to know how the story goes. I just want to know what 
what gets rewarded? What is like a successful reading of Raymond Carver? And here's my guess, okay? Pay attention to details um, that might, <laughs> that's so broad. Um, I don't know how to use this. I don't know how to exp express this in like a less technical form, but like, yeah, but basically pay attention to uh, details and see how he rewards them, you know? Um, and pay attention to the inner lives of these characters. So pay attention to who the characters are. That's what I'm expecting so far. This is an early Raymond Carver, but we, we never heard any difference about early Raymond Carver versus late Raymond Carver. I don't know anything about that difference. Um, but we do kind of know like the, the setting of this story. So honestly, that's good enough. This is too much pre-reading personally. Let me move on. <laughs> so moving on, let's go back to the iPad. And now we get started. Uh, zoom back up. Give me a sec. All right, here we go. All right, and I just re I just recognize that usually the first paragraph of any reading I do, I, I always take like a moment. I, I always like double take to try to get myself into the story. So it's like warm up. Uh, so I'm gonna take it slow and just reread as necessary. Okay. So he, Ralph Wyman, father, principal, Life today was serious. Strength and direction. A comprehensible one. So, we don't know the name of the father yet. But he is the principal of a elementary school, which I assume, right, so that not making, not making bank. But I think this bit, nevertheless, a comprehensible, a comprehensible one, he believed, this sort of qualification, this double qualification, a difficult journey, everyone knew that, that's the first qualification, he believed, that's the second qualification. We have these two qualifications on this point, and the point is, nevertheless, life, this journey of life, is a comprehensible one. And I think that's the thing that we're going to doubt. We're going to attack this idea uh, during this story. Is the journey of life comprehensible? He's 18 and leaving home for the first time in for college. Okay, I was actually going to just say uh, maybe not for college. Maybe he was going to straight to work. But no, he is going to college. So here we go. And actually, I'm not sure what it means in the 60s or 70s to like be a college student. You know, I know that in like in in 2021, like everyone in America goes to college kind of like, OK, everyone is probably the wrong word. But the number has gone up so much compared to like last 50 years or 100 years. So um, so I'm kind of curious about that, but not curious enough to look into it. <laughs> Hazy, undefined, maybe not comprehensible, doctor, lawyer, pre-med, all of them, history, <laughs> business, but he... One option I found is Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County Sorry. on Exposition Boulevard. Siri Do just talking to me. <laughs> Siri, stop. You're being silly. Um... Uh... That distracted me for a second. But yeah, we have Ralph, uh, who is uh, kind of really lost. I mean, business and law and uh, <laughs> doctor and yeah, I don't know. He's just all over the place. Okay, so he's not, a, yeah. He's against, he's on no, no medicine and no law for him. Instead, he got tempted by the sirens of history and philosophy in English. Some kind of momentous discovery about himself, but it never came. 
I I don't love the language of this, but I just feel I just feel some connection here. So I'm gonna save that for now. So, you know what? Maybe one thing that happens is some kind of momentous discovery does come. So maybe it's actually the opposite of my original prediction. Okay, I see. That's where my brain my brain is turning on, and. I was just connecting to this idea of a comprehensible life and then a discovery about oneself, right? So that's in the vein of comprehension, but uh, he doesn't know uh, himself yet. So maybe by the end, actually, the father turns out to be right. The whole time, he can't figure it out. It's not comprehensible, not comprehensible, not comprehensible, not comprehensible, not comprehensible. And at the end, something happens. And he understands. And maybe it's not so great, or we'll see what happens. But that's kind of the framing right now I'm using for this story. Okay. I, I don't love the language for that. I'm not going to save that. Air Force, okay. Learning history and literature and philosophy and joining the Air Force. Dr. Maxwell, never forget him. Handsome, graceful. Vanderbilt, Europe, New York. Teaching. <laughs> Almost overnight, it seemed to him, he decided on teaching. So this was actually his first sort of emotional breakthrough, right? He's like, oh, I know my purpose. Journalism fraternity, English club, cello. So he became a good student in his third year. Going out, Chaucer class. Okay, I wasn't expecting the next paragraph to go straight into her. I thought we were going to sort of gloss over her. Marion Ross. So we have Maxwell, Dr. Maxwell, Marion Ross, and Ralph. High neck sweaters, leather purse, long strap, large, flash and widened. but they never let their going out interfere with their studies. They were serious students and both approved. Student teaching and they married. Go, okay, wow, we're zooming right through. So the thing he he's attracted to is her sort of bright, wide eyes. I, I like this phrase to preserve for solemn excitement mystery. Solemn preserve excitement mystery. So this, you know, even though we're going through this pretty quickly, uh, this whole so we're sort of doing a montage of all these events that happened. You know, we we focus on the hands, the held hands, pledged solemnly. To preserve forever the excitement and the mystery of marriage. And that's such a, that's a, it's a, it, it, it's so real emotionally. You know, I can feel that feeling with them. Hmm. Civilized California, appalled by Guadalajara. I'm kind of curious 
Even so, Mary. Okay, so before I keep moving on, I'm kind of curious. Things are going well, and then we have this minor tinge of like a negative of something bad happening. This enjoyment ex on the external aspects, but like secretly feeling something internally and i think here's my guess right now i think we're gonna have little bits of this just just kind of like twisting a little bit internally this character you know just not this is the first tinge but we're gonna have multiple like little pinches of like internal conflict okay i think it's gonna and we're gonna turn up the heat over time Balustrade, I should know that word. Right, it's like uh, a railing supported by balusters on a balcony. So there's this one scene in particular, I actually just totally missed that sentence, but there's this one scene in particular that he remembers Her hair was long, so we're focusing on her right now. Probably her beauty, okay. She wore a white blouse, bright red scarf at the throat, breast pushing, bottle of dark, unlabeled wine under his arm. Interesting. Interesting. So I got juked out right here. I got juked out because thinking back on it later, it was always a little vaguely disturbing for some reason. Actually, this description just seems kind of, you know, beautiful. Like, I'm in my, I'm in my honeymoon. I remember my wife. She's beautiful. I remember even what she wore. You know, that's supposed to be uh, innocent. It was always a little vaguely disturbing. Hmm. Now I'm disturbed, vaguely. <laughs> Is this Washington? Where's Eureka? Illinois. Is that where they started? Actually, I just I just realized I don't even know where they are. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's super important, but Jefferson, Eureka. I'm going to kind of skip and go with Illinois. But California, I'm, hmm. Maybe they're in California. Eureka in the northern part of the state, near the ocean, they must be in California. Fire Hill District. As well as anyway as any two people could understand one another so there are we're talking about limitations again again minor negative more he understood himself he understood himself his capacities his limitations he knew where he was going and how to get there huh it's funny it's funny because that seems so uh, ironic like i kind of feel like he doesn't understand himself and we're going to he's going to crack under his limitations They had only one serious disturbance, and that was long ago, two years ago that winter to be exact. Two years ago that winter. Hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna swing back to winter. No, they this is winter, and now we're talking about two years before that point, before the point of her going into the junior college. Oh, actually, I just realized something. 
A part-time position in a French English teacher at Harris Junior College at the edge of town. Junior college sounds like, and maybe I'm wrong here, but junior college sounds like a step up. Ralph had stayed on happily at the high school, so it seems like her. It seems like Marion is doing better, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of getting scared that I'm making too many predictions that won't pay off. <laughs> like I want to feel rewarded for all of this work I'm putting in. Hmm. Wait, hang on. I'm, I'm losing it. Two years ago that winter, it was something they had never talked about. Couldn't help thinking about it. Then the scene would jump into his mind rationally and it's proper historical it seemed impossible and monstrous okay i like this rationally and proper historical because that is connecting back to this sentence actually for me um he understood himself his capacities he lim limitation where he's going how to get there so that sounds like a rational person and comprehensible life is supposed to be comprehensible that's the illusion of the rational person everything's going to be making sense so so now i'm getting this strong character this word rationally really solidifies that characterization for me okay ralph is rational rational ralph he's trying he he conceives of the world as something that is rational but he can't accept this thing this thing that breaks the rationality he had taken it into his head one night marion betrayed him with Mitchell Anderson. He struck her. And it's funny because we don't even know if it really happened. We don't know if it really happened because he had just taken it into, it into his head and he hurt her. And that's the only time, that's the only time they had a problem. And now, I'm going to stop here for a sec. In a relationship, if you, if you never have problems, and the one time you have a problem is you strike that person, then you clearly have a lot of problems. You're just not resolving them, uh, is the framework I'm using right now. So we're looking for problems. If you're, I think if you keep reading from this point on, and you're not looking for problems, you're going to have a hard time with the story. That's my guess. Okay, I might be wrong because we need to actually go through this, and it's literally my first time reading this. But this my I'm I'm staking my I'm staking my reputation on this right now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm like ninety percent confident, ninety five percent confident that what I'm saying is basically correct. Here we go. Oh, Sunday night. Oh, so we're actually, I thought we were going to skip that story and move on. But it sounds like we're actually going back to that time. Irritated with the Franklins. Franklins are drinking at the house. Ralph is annoyed. He wanted to fin. Oh my god, I actually simp I'm like Ralph, actually. <laughs> it's like I get all annoyed when people interrupt my work. He sat in the big leather chair. Franklin, he used to be close to, but he's no longer close to. So this is, you know, he's he's a character who, who's kind of weakening in his relationships over time. <laughs> but he was one of the few men on the staff at Harris Junior College who had his PhD. 
So he's a smart one. Combined History and Social Science Department. Witness to a large part of Ralph's humiliation. And I assume Sarah's the wife. Let me just double check. Yes. Harold and Sarah. Harold and Sarah. H and S. Short for History and Social Science. Okay. Uh, I'm starting to forget the characters' names right now. Marion, Ralph, Rational Ralph, Marion, uh, Doctor, forgot Doctor D or something like that. I forget, but he's not. It doesn't look like he's gonna come back anyway. So we have uh, Marion, Ralph, the two children whose names I don't remember right now, and Sarah and H. Harold. Okay, and then that guy M. A. or A. M. Anderson. Mitchell Anderson, M.A. Mitchell Anderson, M.A., just like Marion. Okay, I'm just trying to remember the names right now. I'm all, I've am i always been bad with names in my life, my whole life. Um, A large part of Ralph's humiliation. So actually, no, I, I thought for a second that this was uh, the time. This November was the time two years ago, but actually, no, it's referring back to, see, the two years ago, they saw, they saw him hit Mitchell. No, they saw him hit Marion. Harold and Sarah saw Ralph hit Marion. Of course, Harold and Sarah never brought them up. It was as though nothing had happened. Uneasy. Uneasy. Vaguely disturbed, a little uneasy. We're just building it up. You know, and I'm I'm getting this I'm getting this uh moment here. I think this sort of internal buildup. I think Raymond Carver might be the sort of like um, Raymond Carver might be the the precursor or like uh, what's the right word for this? But the guy who kind of set it all off, the the guy who sort of perfected the form of um, this slow burning internal uh, conflict in a man in a regular man story. And I didn't realize this until now, but I love Yi Chang-dong. Uh, Yi Chang-dong is a Korean uh, uh, director. Uh, and he, his films, are, his most recent film that I saw was Burning, uh, which you know was kind of popping off at the same time as Parasite. I love Burning more than Parasite. I just think it's better constructed, even though Parasite's also really good. but. But I feel like Yi Chang-dong must have read a lot of Raymond Carver. <laughs> just, just, I, just get, I just get that vibe, just reading this and, and watching Burning and other, other movies like Burning, like Peppermint Candy um, and Midiang to some extent, you know, that slow internal burn. Anyway, uh, kind of going to stand for Yi Chang-dong for a sec. And let's go. I just zoned out for a second because I, I think I just lost track of what I was doing. So let me just double check. Okay, so right, we're back in November. We're back in the the present, you know, as present as as can be, right? Um, we're back in the present. Um, he's annoyed because uh, he hasn't finished his work. Here we go.
Damn it, no. Exaggerated grimace, tossing the papers. What the hell? She laughed bright. Made him feel better. I'm already half a, so he's whining. Man, I do this so much. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hate myself. <laughs> Jeez. God. Uh, I'm just like this character. It's horrible. She was tall and limber with a good bust, narrow hips, and wide, gleaming eyes. It's interesting. This is the third time we go. Sh we kind of describe her physical uh, beauty, okay? And I'm realizing that's probably part of the problem, because he thought Mitchell Anderson slept with, or she slept with Mitchell Anderson, or something, right? Um, and he's distracted by her beauty, even during the freaking honeymoon. He saw her beauty, and he was disturbed. He was disturbed. He doesn't trust her. Oh, she she's talking about it. A minute. That's a long time. Try to imagine that minute as a movie scene. That's a long time. It may not be... Obviously, it might not be a real minute, but like a psychological minute. Um, what about it? So I'm my tension, uh, my sort of uh, my sort of uh, what do you call this? My my nervousness level, my stress level was actually going up a little bit. Okay, and it's interesting. Formally, this then also unusual bit of you know him talking. Right, he talks and then he talks. Then, he kissed you after all that night, didn't he? Didn't you try to kiss you or didn't he? He can't hold himself. He's a mess. He goes straight into that accusation. I didn't say that. I was just thinking about it and I asked you, that's all. Now she's being, I think, defensive. Well, he did, didn't he? Come on, Mary. We're just talking, aren't we? Okay, he's getting... Offense, like he's he's on the offense. I won't be angry. Well, <laughs> huh? He, I won't be angry. What a lie! Uh, he did kiss me a few times. Maybe she's drunk. His first impulse was to return the smile. Then he blushed. His arm around you. Trying to tell him something. He didn't hear. He hit her in the mouth. To avoid the nose. She asked dreamily. Interesting. This dreamily word is helping me here because her eyes still bright, her mouth dripping blood. The eyes being bright, speaking dreamily. What did you do that for? Um, there's like this, there's like this um, irreality, you know, this, this sort of, she's sort of unreal, you know, um, for her, she got touched by this man and kissed by this man. And for her, it's, and she told him about it or something like that. But for her, she's not, her intensity level is not at the level of him, you know, at, the, at the level of Ralph. Ralph is like way up here and she's not, you know? And so she just gets hit and she's, and her first reaction isn't to like cry and be hysterical. She's just like, what'd you do that for? Uh, which is interesting. It's an unusual, surprising uh, reaction. And so for her, like, I'm kind of curious. For her, is it like, is she just sort of sexually, like, 
open in a way that Ralph isn't. And so she's just sort of like, what is that? What's going on with her, you know? Um, or is this sort of just his subjective perception where he doesn't even really remember what she's saying, you know? It's just for him, it's like a dream. I'm like a little confused there. I'm not totally sure what's happening there, okay? But it's surprising. I wasn't gone all night. I didn't do anything. Why did you hit me? Oh, I see. So she didn't tell him that at that time. Interesting. You for leaving the party with Michael and Mitchell Anderson. I'm sorry too, even so, you didn't have to knock hell out of me. I don't know, maybe I should have done more. And they both had to laugh. How do we ever get onto this, she asked. You brought it up. The Franklins being here made me think of it, I guess. Huh. So, they the Franklins didn't see him punch her. So if the Franklins saw something else, so there's something else that happened, which I don't know of. So I'm looking forward to that. But I have to say, at this point, I am a little... I feel a little disengaged. I don't feel the emotional connection to the characters yet. And... I'm struggling. Hmm, she's making the buttered rum. It's funny, she seems so like forgiving in a way and kind of hey, you hit me, but whatever, I'm sorry. You know, she it's 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 unusual. Like I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He washed her hips. Ugh. I'm starting to get creepy rape vibes. Um, she smoothed her palm down over her right hip, tucking in her blouse. He wondered what she was thinking. She continued to stand in front of the, uh, the window. She was looking outside, right? But what else went on? It's all right to talk about it now. And I do believe him this time. He's seems like he's trying to get over it. And he they said sorry. Okay, so Anderson is also upwardly mobile. Okay, so the upwardly mobile bit. So he is actually going to become a professor at a four-year four college. So he's being more real. Okay. So... Ralph is the one with the fewest friends and the fewest social connections. Uh, and Anderson is the one who's upwardly mobile, along with his wife, along with Ralph's wife, Marion, who's in the middle. Early 30s. Casual, eccentric. And sometimes, Marion thought, he wore a green velvet smoking jacket. The girls were crazy about him. So we kind of sexual, we're sexualizing Marion, right? Uh, when I say we, I'm talking about Ralph. He, Ralph sees the sexual sort of tension just within his own wife, but his wife, who's sort of kind of, who's sort of kind of cool, you know, she's, she kind of rolls with the flow and she's just doing well in her job, apparently. Just casually mentions how, like, the sexual attractiveness of of um, Mitchell. He 
He hadn't liked him from the beginning, and he was glad he was gone. I, uh, just minor comment on memory. It was always vaguely disturbing from the from the beginning, and oh, he hadn't liked him from the beginning. So we're we're very much in the subjectivity of the present, Ralph. And Ralph is a sort of suspicious guy. He has a lot of negative feelings about people. She's not talking anymore. She's actually already moved on. I'm sorry I ever said anything about it. Very uh, meaningful. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever... I'm sorry I did it versus I'm sorry I ever brought this up or said anything about it. It's actually a little ambiguous. I'm kind of confused if she's saying that I brought it up today or I ever mentioned it in the first place. Nine forty five. It's actually pretty early. Oh, well, I think it's pretty early. Look, honey, it's been brought up now. Interesting. He's being stubborn. I'd like to know whatever else he did besides kiss you were adults. We haven't seen the Andersons in a year at least. There's no reason we could ever, we can't talk about it. He was a little surprised at the level reasoning quality. Okay, so interesting. Level reasoning. So this is his sort of, um, That's his, those, those are his principles. He's, he's trying to be a reasonable person. I won't get angry. We can't talk. So of course we can talk about it. So, we'll probably... So, actually, he's deliberately calming down his voice, right? We haven't seen the Andersons in a year, at least. We'll probably never see them again. It happened a long time ago. As I see, there's no reason whatsoever we can't talk about. <laughs> I'm not trying to be... It will make, for Christ's sake, Mary, now I mean it. He's getting upset. Hooking her heels. Arms across her knees. Something on her skirt. This physicality. Right now we're having, it's interesting, we have this sort of tortured rationality here with Ralph, who's just trying to be rational. Uh, and then we have this physical Marion who's sort of casual about the whole thing. And like all the descriptions of, of, um, of Marion is all very much of her body, of her clothes, you know? It's very physical and embodied. I mean, I just want to stop there, yeah. That contrast is a useful contrast. I, I want it to be more I want it to be stronger, but for now we're waiting. We're still in the middle of the story. Emily had already gone home. So right now we have, I, so I just zoned out for a second because I didn't realize who was talking, but it's definitely Marion talking. Mitchell had stayed on. He looked out of sorts. Maybe they weren't getting along. Emily is the wife. I don't know that, but there were you and I, the Franklin's and Mitchell. I remember, if I remember rightly, we were drunk. Happened to find ourselves alone in the kitchen for a minute. No whiskey. One o'clock. Liquor store. You know how it can be so theatrical when he wants. Soft shoes, stuffish expressions. He was very witty about it all. Which must be a... That's like a knife in Ralph's gut. He, must, he was very witty about it all, right? We're talking about the attractiveness of Mitchell Anderson right now. Straight to Ralph. 
at least it seemed that way. I was very drunk. So it was an impulse. I don't know. I agreed. We didn't even get our coats. We thought we'd just be gone a few minutes. It was an impulse. So she slept with him. It was a wrong impulse. I shouldn't have done anything like that. I know that. Christ, the word beeped out. But you've always been that way, Marion. So now, remember, this is actually a massive contra uh, contradiction with what he was saying earlier. Ralph was saying... Yeah, they're, the, the narrator has been saying, yeah, there's never been any conflict. Or it's a contradiction with what, you would, what you're supposed to be expecting, right? The, expect, the expectation is that things are not, things are okay or supposed to be okay. But you've always been that way, Mary. He's been judging him, her, of her impulsiveness. That isn't true. Tiny accusation. He tried to focus on one. He just wanted to make one accusation of how she's impulsive in this like slutty way basically uh he's pissed i'm listening so he's calming himself down go on what is the matter with this anyway how do we ever get on to this subject go on marion i've told you we went for it he talked he kissed me i still don't see how we could have gone, been gone three hours whatever it was whatever it was you said three hours An hour, two hours. Lean weekly. God. His wife is gone with another man. Three hours at a party. Left with the Franklins. So he must have done something stupid in front of the Franklins. Okay. Right now my engagement level is coming back up. I'm, I'm just sort of imagining all the, all the things that could have happened. He's weak. The Franklins themselves are embarrassed. It's at their own house. He's freaking awkward because he's the host and he's out in the balcony taking a breath of air. But actually he's just... He's overwhelmed and, you know, the guests, the two guests are just like chilling in the house. And they leave. Oh, so he didn't do anything stupid in front of the Franklins. I was wrong. Nothing was left but a vast, empty realization of betrayal. He went to the house and sat at the same table, and he remembered his shoulder began to twitch, and he couldn't even stop it. Tell me the rest, Marion. Right, and the tension right now in this conversation is she keeps saying he kissed her. You know, so she's being, pa she's like, he kissed her. You know, she didn't really do anything. But that's probably a lie. I mean, three hours is a long time for one guy to just kiss you and not do anything. So, upset. Upset. Yeah. He's being cheated on. <laughs> Very upset. Uh, but Marion's also... It's funny, though, because Marion's the one who did the wrong thing, but... Um, in this story, we're sort of um, focusing more on the incompleteness of Ralph himself. We're not really focusing too much on Marion's like sluttiness or anything like that. We're we're actually focusing more on Ralph. If he hadn't been married, he'd be doing something else.
Ralph, you won't be angry, will you, Ralph? We're just talking, you won't, will you? So she's going to confess. He had a, he has suddenly a great desire to avoid the, the confession, the thing that he's been wanting but dreading to hear. You know, what's this black coach? He began to, with the outline of one of the tiny black coaches in the in the beige tablecloth. Okay, so there's a tablecloth in front of him, and he's, so he's uh, scared. He's nervous, and he's distracted. He's doing this tracing motion, right, with the thing in front of him. He's focusing on the horses. He's focusing on the hat. You know, so, you know, if this is a movie, you're focusing on the tablecloth itself because Ralph is not paying attention. He's not making eye contact with Marion. So he's drunk. We were talking about a lot of things that didn't make sense from Nietzsche, Strindberg. Norman Mailer stabbing his wife. So lots of intellectual talk, just like professorial talk, like literature professor talk. Then I'll swear before God it was an accident. He didn't know what he was doing. He made a wrong turn, and we somehow wound up out by the golf course. Right near Jane Van Eaton's. Okay, so stop here. Uh, okay, they didn't just simply have sex. It's something way more complicated. Okay, so the three hours is being filled up. And the crazy thing is, this is going to give Ralph hope that maybe nothing really happened. But obviously, Marion's been holding off and telling the truth, so something did happen. We pulled into her driveway to turn around. And when we did, we might as well open one of these bottles. He did, he opened it. And who comes out? And then he's not too far from the Franklins. And he stopped for a minute in the middle of the road with his lights on. Took a drink. He'd hate to think of me being stabbed in the breast. I guess he was still thinking about Mailer's weapon. And then I said, Oh my God. I know you get angry. It's crazy because Marion's saying this in such a sort of... Like she's guilty, but she's simple in a way that Ralph isn't. Like, how do I explain this? She's, she just knows that she should tell Ralph. She knows she should tell Ralph. Even though it's probably not a good idea at all. But for her, she just, she should just tell Ralph. But she feels guilty and she's, she's just having a hard time telling Ralph. But for Ralph, it's this like tortured, complicated thing, you know, um, you know, he's like, I won't get angry, Mary. He's he's the one lying, right? Mar oh, that's I guess that's I guess that's the big thing. Ralph lies and Marion doesn't. Uh, at least not in any complicated. Ralph Ralph lies even even to himself, but Marion's very honest with herself and just only tells white lies. Uh, and I think that's the difference here. Alertness taking hold of his body. Go on then. Then what, Marion? Go on then. Go on. Then what, Marion? Go on. Then what, Marion? So he's trying to hold his voice down, right? No, but I'm getting interested, though. They both had to laugh. So he's trying to be call cool about this, and they, he, they laugh. And for a minute, everything was all right. But I'm getting interested, though. And they smiled at each other, just like any other night. You know, it's 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 hard for me to imagine the laughter. I think I don't know. It's just I I, I find it hard to imagine the laughter coming out. Like, cause I th I guess I guess the dialogue. It's just hard for me to imagine that kind of dialogue. He's trying to be cool about it, and actually, he's successfully being cool at it. And I, I think that's the hard part. Like it. If I could feel that feeling of being obsessive but also successfully managing that obsession while talking to my wife who probably cheated on this other uh, on me with this other man 
if I could imagine that this dialogue would feel more real, uh, but I don't, I can't, I can't, I find it hard to imagine it. I want some some good, very good actor to sort of act it out for me. Um, that would help me a lot. All these cigarettes too. I feel like I'm kind of missing something with all these cigarettes, but anyway, the main thing is he's distracted still and there it's take time is passing. Go on. I don't know. Things seem to happen fast after that. He drove up the road a little. He started kissing me. Kissed my breast. I said I don't think we should. What about Emily? Head on my lap. I felt like I was losing my innocence somehow, Ralph. Interesting sentence. It didn't seem that way all at all then. Interesting. This is kind of crazy. She's kind of not guilty. She doesn't feel guilty. It sounds so vulgar, but it didn't seem vulgar at that time. I was losing my innocence somehow, Ralph. For the first time that night, I realized I really, really was, I was really, really doing something wrong, something I wasn't supposed to, and that might hurt people. I shouldn't be there, I felt. And I felt like it was the first time I'd ever intentionally done anything wrong or hurtful and gone on doing it, knowing I shouldn't be. Do you know what I mean, Ralph? Like some of the characters in Henry James, I felt that way. Like for the first time, my innocence, something was happening. Weird, very weird. And of course, Ralph gets pissed. You can dispense with that shit he cut in. Get off him, Mary. Go on. Then what? Did he caress you? So Ralph is focused on the on the physical behavior. She is focused on her internal process of like the significance of that night. And for her in this drunk state, she's just sort of talking about it as if it's something interesting and sort of something literary even. Um, to do something to hurt somebody and she's so pleasant she smiles and she makes Ralph feel good but she also intentionally tried to hurt she intentionally hurt Ralph interesting intellectually interesting not emotionally I'm not emotionally very connected but just interesting did he caress you did he did he try to fill you up Marion tell me of course he did but then she hurried on trying to go over the hard spots quickly and he sat with her hands folded on the table, washed her lips out of which dropped the fretful words. His eyes skipped around the kitchen, the stove. So interesting, we're skipping the actual story. So we're, if this were a movie, we're sort of zooming out. Um, the, the, her, voices fade out uh, her voice fades out to background, and we're focusing on his eyes. Um, back to her face, her dark eyes. Interest, not bright eyes this time, dark eyes glistening under the overhead light. Peculiar desire for her flickered through his thighs at what she was leading up to. And at the same time, he had to check and urge to stand up yelling, smash his fist into her face. Shall we have a go at it? He said. Shall we have a go at it? Ralph repeated. So he feels sexual desire for her. Shall we have a go at it? I feel like he's about to... I had that creepy rape vibes earlier, and I'm kind of scared that rape is about to happen. He said he'd leave it all up to me. I could, could do whatever I wanted. Oh, no, no, you're not going out for liquor with that Mitchell Anderson. He's drunk and he isn't a good driver to boot. He wishes he could stop it. She had a hand up. She was crying. Her shoulders. I'm, I'm stopping here for a sec. Because right now, again, her shoulders, her face, hand, eyebrows, 
right? We have the physical description of her, but that there was that one moment where we got to enter her brain, where she got to talk about her sort of thoughts on this situation. And I'm just like noticing that contrast there. <sighs> Why did you go with him, Marion? He asked desperately. Cuckled. <laughs> he wanted to say, I forgive you. The middle, his thoughts, because he's an intellectual, he's on Arthur Guinevere, the husbandry of the 18th century dramatist, Karenin, Anna Karenina is what it's referring to. They were f nothing, figments. They were just things that did not relate. What is the nature of a book, his mind roared. Crazy sentence. That is a crazy sentence. How is that? That's crazy. That's such a surprising sentence. Where did that come from? Because he's thinking about these books suddenly while she's talking about this physical reaction, physical incident that occurred. She has herself also kind of goes into her brain for a second. A crazy sentence. That is not normally what you would scream at yourself when, 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 you're, when you realize that your wife is cheating on you. Crazy sentence. I don't understand it. Christ, he says, bringing up Jesus Christ. Christ, no, Marion. You let him. You let him, didn't you? Didn't you answer me? Did he come in you? Did you let him come in you? That's why. And he said his teeth shattered me. That bastard. He didn't come. He didn't come in me. Ugh. God damn you. Are we crazy? God, are we crazy, Ralph? Have we lost our minds, Ralph? Forgive me, Ralph. Forgive. Away from me, Mary. <laughs> so he's. Her eyes were wide and large, and she began to pant in her fright. She tried to head him off, but he took her by the shoulder and pushed her out of the way. He jerked open the door, clattered over the dustpan as he rushed onto the porch. She sh took his arm at the porch door, but he shook her loose. So, hang on. He's going outside. So, no rape, which is a relief. And I'm shocked, but there's a part two. <laughs> so I was not ready for that. I thought it was going to be close to the end, actually. Limbed against the door. Interesting word. Limning. I remember this during college. I just... Right. Right. This is one of those... He looked back. My God, he thought. What a sideshow it was. Fat men and bearded ladies. Crazy sentence too. I don't understand. I don't know what the reference is. We're talking about a sideshow. Fat man, bearded. Oh, it's like a, he listened to the whole story. And the story is like a circus. A circus of fat man, bearded ladies. What a sideshow. It's a circus. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a sideshow. And... Um, He's distancing himself. This whole story is just ridiculous. Now I actually want to know how much of this story is left. So let me quickly. Oh, part three. 
maybe I maybe that was my problem. Maybe I I was expecting too short of a story, so I was uh I was focusing too much on all the little details. In that case, I might have to take a quick break and continue. Yeah, cuz uh I haven't had dinner yet. So I'll stop for now. Uh and do a do a quick quick reflection. I think I slogged through the story too much. Uh, te so technically speaking, with terms in terms of my reading, I think I slogged through the story so much uh, too much. So I'm going to uh, speed up for uh, parts two and three. Now that I know, and I, this is one of the advantages of paper books, you can kind of quickly skim like how long a story is. Um, so you can kind of adjust your expectations accordingly. But you know, Kindle, whatever. Um, I think I was a little too slow um, and I read too much. So I was investing too much into every single like line. Uh, I should back off a little bit uh, and speed it up a little bit and just focus on, the, get more broad touches, broad strokes, okay? So, um, uh, would I say that hurt my reading? I think it, it did a little bit. I think focusing so much on the details hurt my reading. Uh, this is what having too strong of expectations, I think, does to you. Uh, so if I could summarize what's happened so far, basically, in the first act, Ralph learns the truth. He has no concern whatsoever with the thoughts of his wife. His wife is almost, she's guilty, but not quite, but trying to be honest, you know, she's trying. Whereas Ralph is more obsessive and self-withdrawn. He's into himself only. So she seems like the actually the more sane character. Uh, Ralph seems a little crazier. And we had that framing at the very beginning, the father, the principal of the elementary school, who's like, hey, life is tough, but comprehensible. So we're still looking for meaning. All right, that's the first act of Will You Please Be Quiet, Please? Uh, I will continue soon. For now, though, that'll be it.